Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this 5-Minute Sono video, I'm going to walk you through how to do an ultrasound-guided pericardiocentesis. Now, for this, you definitely want to use your standard cardiac transducer over there on the left for the identification of pericardial tamponade, but when you're doing your procedure of the pericardiocentesis, using a curvilinear here or a linear transducer is better for the actual procedure because you'll be able to see a lot better that needle entering that sac. Now, with regards to the equipment to use, you can definitely use a, a standard pericardiocentesis kit, but if you don't have access to that, you can use a central line kit. This is a triple lumen or just an angiocath or a spinal needle to just get in there and drain some of that fluid. Now, you can go anywhere that there is a big pocket, the biggest pocket, and I typically prefer to go apical or parasternal. Now, I like that because typically there are less structures and less distance to go through, and if you can see the pericardial effusion causing tamponade with the ultrasound machine, there is no lung in between that probe and the pericardial fluid because if there was lung, lung has air, air blocks sound waves and you wouldn't be able to see it. So this helps you safely go in non-traditional windows. Here's an example of a parasternal long axis view, pericardiocentesis. This is a needle here. This is courtesy of Arun Nagdev. Now this definitely works and this was a successful pericardial synthesis, but what might be better is using that linear transducer. Here you can see the needle with the guide wire actually already in that fluid. Here is the heart. You really only need to see just a centimeter or two of that cardial border because you don't need the whole thing. You just need to be able to see the needle go into that fluid, and this is likely the most accurate you can be, especially when the effusion itself is not that large. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. When you go parasternal or apical, just be careful with blood vessels. There is an internal thoracic, also known as the internal mammary artery, that is in the parasternal location that you should be careful of. And then, of course, you have your intercostal arteries that usually sit below the ribs themselves. If you want help making sure that you miss them, put color flow Doppler in the region in which you are going to do the procedure before you do it to make sure that you don't have any big blood vessels there. This is an apical four-chamber view. This is the heart, a little bit of the liver, that left lobe of the liver, and we actually were seeing a bit of the aorta right there, right there, and we're seeing that needle go into that pericardium right there. Now this, I could have decreased and should have decreased the depth to about here, but this was a successful pericardiocentesis without any harm done to the heart. Here we see a subcostal window with an, a heart here, and this is just the identification of that effusion causing tamponade. Now this practitioner, and this is courtesy of Sano Clipshare, did decrease the depth and change to a curvilinear transducer so they could see a little bit better. You can see right here the needle coming into the right area, and then here we're seeing that needle pop right into that pericardial sac to drain this effusion. Now with the subcostal window, this is one that I might use the way out of plane technique or the whoop technique. Here I have the transducer in a transverse orientation and my needle is right above it going straight in. I'm not gonna get great needle visualization, but I'm using the trajectory of that ultrasound as a guide and observing just a section of that needle tip in that pericardial sac here. I don't love the subxiphoid view because if you are too low, you might accidentally pierce the diaphragm or the liver. But if this is the only window, this would be the preferred way to do it in the way out of plane approach rather than the in plane approach that would be recommended for the apical and parasternal windows. 
Now, after you're pretty sure that you're in the right location, you want to confirm placement. You aspirate a bit of that blood and then push it back in. And if you see agitated fluid within that pericardial sac and not inside the heart itself, you are in the pericardium and not in the heart itself. So you can go ahead and continue on with the procedure of that pericardiocentesis. That's it for this five minute sono video on pericardiocentesis. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.